Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, this is part two of the Roxy Creations prompt and stitchery. That was the little cottage and uh, vintage quilt. So as you would know if you've watched part A or part one, part two for me is about the construction of the little cottage. So I just wanted to, I've actually covered what I've done because it's very distracting. And if it was me watching this video, I wouldn't be listening to a word that was being said and I'd be peeking around looking at the, um, the progress. So what I wanna do is just cover it for a moment, bring you up to speed of where I'm at <clears throat> and um, what I've done so far. Okay, as you remember, I had chosen this little cottage as my inspiration. It was a photo of a cottage in England. Um, I then got a screenshot of it on my phone and emailed it to myself. If you're wondering sort of my little process that I use to get to this stage, I emailed it to myself and then when I opened the email, <clears throat> I was able to click on it, copy it and paste it into Word. From there, I could click on it and a grid would appear and I could enlarge the photo to sort of suit the size I needed. So my first printout was this one. <clears throat> And my panel is about so big, it's sort of just underneath there, so it was too small. Then I enlarged it not only in height, which sort of stretched the roof up, I also pulled it at the corner and stretched it out sideways as well. So I did change the shape of the house a little bit, but it's still much better than the first one. So I decided to leave it at that because I didn't want to cover up all the beautiful fabrics that I placed around the perimeter of the panel. So then to make sure I kept true to the architect of this building and its shape, I got some kitchen paper and started tracing out or drawing over the top of the photo some of the key elements. For example, the piece that was here in the center of the house, in the front of the house, which is forward and then the piece that is the actual house itself, and that is back a little bit. So that helps you to create depth. And wherever it was going to overlap, I just did a little dotted line there, just to let me know that I had to cut that, that piece a little bit bigger, so that it would tuck under this piece, if that makes sense. So this is just rough, but it really helps you to get the structure of your building, especially if you're wanting to be as true as you can to a particular shape of a house. That's the roof. So that's the bit that will be at the back of the house there. And then there is a gable that sits at the front, which is that piece. Okay, does that make sense? So that easily gives you your main elements to your image. And then there was the wriggly little bit across the top. I'm sure it's got a specific name, but I'm not from England, so I'm not 100% sure, but I bet that has a name. Here we'd call it ridge capping, and it'd be um, to secure this side and the other side of the house to stop water getting in through the top there. So we'll call it ridge capping. So now what I've got is a series of little elements to give me my basic structure. Okay, so we'll put that to one side. I'm going to reveal my little house. It's just pinned at the moment because I'm 99% sure everything will stay. But, um, well, who knows? Because when you start stitching things, it um, can change. So... Let's have a little look at what we did. The first thing I did was find my <clears throat> fabrics for the house. So the little piece in the center here turned out to come from this old piece of quilt that was all faded out. So it's just a case of popping it on and cutting it out. So that was the first piece. Then I chose the back of the house, the walls which was a piece of the recycled doily that we started with. And then I laid over the top of it some lace. Okay, so that gave me a nice textured panel in here of lace. Now I'll just bring that up to the camera so you can see what I mean. You can see the little piece of quilt at the front of the house and then the piece at the rear with the lace laying over the top of it. 
Then I started to want my house to be a little bit bigger. So I ended up cutting another piece of this original doily fabric and placing it under the <clears throat> little piece of quilt. So I'll bring it up again and you'll see where that laid because I wanted lots of layers in this structure so it looked really busy, if that makes sense. So the house now is starting to get bigger across this front portion. <clears throat> so there's the original doily, there's the piece of quilt. Then I turned that piece of quilt over and cut out some windows. So on the other side is this blue quilt. So that then gave me another puffy piece, if you will, to create more height to my um, little house. Then I started working on the trims to go around the, um, the architrave, I guess, for want of a better description of a lacy little house. And it was a combination of a few things. It was, um, but mainly, whenever I cut up a doily <clears throat> and get all of the uh, motifs out of it, you're always left with this edge, whether it be an old tablecloth or a runner. And I wind them onto a board, which then gives me um, multitudes of tones and colours and thicknesses of crocheted edging. It's just, I find the best way to store it. So I end up choosing this particular one. And it was like the gift that kept giving. You'll, I'll show you what I mean in a moment when you start looking at some of the elements. But I'm just going to lay it there. So the edge that's here coming down this became a piece that sits in here and across the ridge of the roof. This little edge down here was this little edge through here. So it was just a case of trimming that and that gave me a tiny scalloped little piece to work with. Okay. That's the piece that's on the edging of the roof and in the eave. So I'm just going to trim that again. So that's that portion. This became the fencing. There's going to be a fence along here with a little swinging gate. Then within that scallop, I started to cut out even smaller elements. So just the center of that scallop became the top of the door became some features underneath the window like a window sill okay so you can see where i'm heading with this even the even the chimney has a little piece of this on it it was like i was frosting a cake it, um, it sort of reminded me of making a uh, gingerbread house where you start to layer up all of the icing and the lollies and the fondant and things like that so that's sort of how this came to be now there is um, a piece of lace underneath here that helped provide the roof shape that was going to be fabric and I went around cutting out this and the lace uh, the sorry the house was getting bigger and bigger on this side so that no longer became relevant and every piece of fabric I put it on just didn't look right and I knew I wanted this to be lacy like frosting so I grabbed this lace here which is quite an interesting one because it's got two sides to it are, are two decorative sides so that was laid in as the foundation for the the peak of the house and then I found this trim which was then going to be I guess I don't know what else would you call this on a house I don't know we'll call it the guttering <laughs> that's the guttering and then underneath the guttering the um, flashing is the um, crocheted piece and we've got the lace the cream lace that's sitting behind it all poking out so we're starting to get like layers and layers of uh, yumminess happening here the roof at the back here was this piece so i was looking at this check if you remember the first video and i really wanted to use it so i'm so pleased that that's included because it just brings that pop of dark um darkness to the roof in 
and then it gets all soft and frilly from there. So that was the roof. So we've talked about our edging. That piece was through there, which just expanded because I ended up making the base underneath the quilt bigger. So everything had to get bigger. Um, oh, we've mentioned the fence. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, where this met the ground to disguise the fact that that was a sharp edge. I've used some um, cheesecloth fabric there, which I'll just stitch down in a few random places and then I'll put some little flowers in the back there to denote a garden next to the wall of the fence. I have sketched in a line here that could be a path, but I'm not gonna bother. I think there's so much going on anyway to try and sketch in a path leading up to the house. I, I don't think I can pull it off. And the thickness, you'd have to be nearly an architect to get it right because you've got to show the distance between here and the point of which you're walking, which would be down here. And it's a little bit tricky. Plus I want some air in here so that I can do some seed stitch and burrow stitch and things like that. So I'm gonna leave that blank. I ended up um, including the embroidery, which was this one. So I've cut off a piece of it. I had to be a little bit careful because it's all embroidered in one. So that green leaf has gone through the whole piece. So where I cut it, I actually had to stitch in behind just to re-secure those ribbons so that they didn't unravel as it sort of rolls around in my little box of tricks. So I managed to insert that little shrub there. And then as more and more scraps of this lace, uh, this embroidered, uh, sorry, I'm tongue tied here, this crocheted piece came to be like little random snippets. I just started poking them in everywhere. For example, in the back here could be another one. It just adds dimension to your piece. So all my little scrappy bits were just stuck in everywhere so I could even pop in another one over here so my yo-yo is in position it's once again got scraps in it there were some little um, ribbon French knots that were sitting out here as sort of too far away from the plant so I've cut them off and they're going in the center of the yo-yo once again here's another piece of that crocheting and I've left it in its entirety and just cut out a one inch piece, which I thought looked like a bit of trellis. And then I've added some um, tulle through this, like a piece of it that I've woven through the trellis, trellis and that's gonna come up as the stem to the yo-yo uh, flower, which will be all embellished. And then all the way along the bottom, just to start building the foreground, I've got lots and lots of pieces of sari silk. And what I mean by that, this is sari silk. It's strips that have been stitched together that you can use to tie um, around journals and things. And it's just the, the best fabric for embroidery. So I've literally just cut bits off and laid them back on themselves right across the bottom here, which allows me to get a little bit of height. And then in amongst the sari silk, even more scraps of my um, crocheted edging. The feature piece here is the cross stitch. Now, when I had it in originally, it was very flat and it was sort of like everything was bouncing alive here. Everything was layered and thick and textured like a three-dimensional gingerbread cottage. And then there was this flat blob in the middle that just didn't look right. So just before I turned on the camera, I'd sort of created this this morning and I've gone and done chores all day and I've kept coming back glancing at it glancing at it and all I could see was how flat and lacking movement and puffiness and I think it's because we're using quilt we're getting this puffiness about the whole thing and then some chunky crocheting that um, I popped in behind there a piece of wadding and I think it's really helped. I just cut out a little random piece of wadding. I've even, remember this piece was a little longer and I wasn't gonna cut it until I knew the depth I needed. Well, that's still turned in underneath and that's helped to pad it up. But the wadding has really taken it to a new level. 
So I'm really happy now with the way that piece is looking. It looks like I've got a garden here. Then there's a, a slight slope up to this house and the fence I want to try and keep quite loose and fluid. And then the little house is built from there. So I hope that makes sense. Everything is like stabbed, pinned at the moment. I've managed to get my little chimney in with the little piece of uh, fabric that was in one of Rachel's packs that she sent me. I was hoping to use more of it, but I sort of got to the end and I hadn't used it. It got lost in the mess of the table and I hadn't used it. I'm like, oh, do I put a patch here? I've got to use it. What do I do? What do I do? And I actually had to go out for the morning to the dentist and I'm um, lying in the dentist chair and she'd forgotten to put a movie on above me. You know how they often have a TV above them and the credits were scrolling from some kid's movie. And it was just scrolling away, scrolling away. And it was nothing really to see. So I started thinking about this and I'm lying there and she's working away and um, I'm watching these credits and my mind drifted back to my little house. And I thought, well, how am I going to include this ribbon? And then at the end of this credit rolling came the screensaver with the um for the from the tv the brand of the tv and dead set you wouldn't believe it it was this cottage but it was like full on this cottage it was layers upon layers and then there was like i think a rapunzel in it looking character it was a bit cartoony but a bit photography as well it was beautiful it had wisteria all around the windows and then right at the very top, and I'm looking at it going, oh, I could do wisteria, I could do this, I could do this. Dentist is asking me questions and she's tapped me on the shoulder to go, oh, are you okay? I had zoned out. I was studying this house that was above my head in the dentist chair. It was just oh, hilarious. I get back into this house because she got the answer she needed was I think, are you in pain? Of course I wasn't because I was like absorbed in this little house on the screen and I'm studying it in the layers and it had peaks like this, but like three of them in the house as the little house went up, there was like these three peaks get right to the top and the chimney. I'm thinking chimney, I've forgotten the chimney. Rachel's fabric is going to be the chimney and I think it's perfect. It's like brought to the top of my piece the colors that are down the bottom here so everything in the middle here is blues purples and whites everything down here is greens yellows and blues so now by having this little piece at the top i haven't even pinned it like i've literally come back from the dentist and gone the chimney the chimney and then i'm going to use a little piece of that to um, put on the edge of the uh, chimney so I'll bring it up to the camera now and very slowly show you close-ups of it so that you can sort of have a really good look at everything I just spoke about. The frosting on the house. Okay, so that, and there's a pussycat that's just come into the room. Okay, so I'm just going to spin my board around, bring that up there. You can see the sari silk across the bottom. It's going to be a real challenge to stitch this because I haven't really pinned anything down. It's just stabbed straight into my mat. So that's where I'm at. The background is all secured. I didn't do any stitching on it yet because I just, I don't know, I just wanted to dive into the house and the house just became my focus and it just became, you know, bigger than Ben-Hur, literally. And I even drew inspiration from the dental chair. Like, it's just hilarious how these things happen. So the next thing is to turn all these pins sideways, pin everything down, and now I've got um, some stitching to do. So I'm going to turn the video off. When I come back, it will be all secured, and I'm going to start embellishing. If you think this is embellished, you wait till the beads turn up and the buttons and the sequins and all the embroidery stitches. So, oh, I can't wait. I was so worried about this piece. It was quite a challenge in my mind, as I said in the first video, but it's coming together beautifully. I love how it's just interesting and whimsical. Ah, love it. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. That's, gee, we've been gas bagging for 20 minutes, so... I'm going to go away now and um, 
enjoy the process of stitching. Thank you. I'll see you all shortly. Bye. Okay. Hello everyone again. I'm just popping back to show you where I'm at with the uh, stitchery. Everything is stitched down. It took a while. It actually took hours. I think I sat down at four o'clock in the afternoon and I, with dinner in amongst it, um, I think it was about 11.30 at night when I finished. So it just took forever repositioning and making sure that it was all okay and then little invisible stitches everywhere. So I just thought I'd um, show you that, that uh, that stage is completed. And the next stage is um, probably my favorite, embellishing. I say that every time, but I think planning it's my favorite. No, no, oh, it's all so good. What can I say? The whole process is just fun. Embellishing. Now, I've gone through my beads and I've picked out heaps of um, colors in the blues, the turquoises, and even some little purple beads. Picking up on the purple in the roof and the blue in the uh, flowers down the bottom, plus uh, the roof line, and then some greens picking up on the two greens that are in it from a fresh green to um, an olive. And then I even picked up a little gold. Sometimes gold and silver are that neutral color that really makes your work come alive. So don't ever rule out silver beads and gold beads if you're putting together a little collection of beads. It's like um, it helps light bounce around your piece. Otherwise it can look very flat. So I've got a little bit of gold this time because of the yellow flower here. So these are the gold ones, a couple different sizes, and there's two tones there, a more orangey one and then a fresher, brighter one. So we'll see how they go. In the greens, I've picked up some little gems. These are like an, an olivey emerald. Is that going to focus on my finger? Nope. Let's come a little closer. There we go. So it's like a um, an emerald gem. So I'm not sure where they'll go, but um, they'll be something interesting to play with. And then a, a more of a, a, a dirty green, an olive warm green. A couple purples ranging right through from a pastel through to a darker purple. They'll be interesting. They'll definitely go in around the, the roof here. And then in the blues, I've sort of gone even into the green a little bit with those. That one there is like a bit of a greeny blue. And then the fresh blues. And I like this little mix because there's even some little pink ones in there that may end up in here as well, just as little highlights. And then this one was thinking along the lines of the roof. There's some real dark blues in there and even some darker pinks. So a bit of a mixed, mixed bag. So they're my beads. This is the um, next stage, embellishing. So I just also have this bunny. He's from the Peter Rabbit collection. And I just can't decide if bunny should appear in here. He sort of matches the fabrics beautifully, but I just don't know. So I was thinking he could pop in under that plant. He could sit in over here. Hmm, I just could be down here in the middle. Let me know in the comments if you think Bunny should be in or not. I just, just don't know. So I'll bring him up to the screen so you can have a good look at him. I can't even read what's on the, oh yes I can, Benjamin Bunny. There you go. I couldn't read that script yesterday. So that's little Bunny. Should he stay or should he go? So let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about Bunny. The other thing I wanted to mention was this fence. I wanted the fence to look rickety. If it was too straight, it sort of would look like a piece of crocheting. So I sort of, to give the illusion of it being, you know, wonky, I've only stitched the bottom of it and then one line up so that the top of it is still fluid and moving. And then I wanted the gates to be open, so I've turned them back on themselves, so they look 3D, if you can see. See how they're sticking up in the air there? 
So that was just something different. I thought I could try. The gates have swung open. Welcome to our property. And it's got this wonky little fence going along the front. Okay, what else did I want to say before we leave it at that? I do have my lines marked for my windows. The next thing, of course, is outlining everything. And I think the blue is going to be really good once it makes its appearance on the piece as well, just to define the house. So I've got a heap of vintage cottons here that um, I can use to um, outline my house. I also wanted just to touch base on this container. Someone asked me about it. They must have spotted it in a video previously. This container I got from Officeworks in Australia. I believe in America you have staples. It is fantastic for keeping crochet cotton. Keeps it dust free and um, plenty of space for big balls, light balls. And the best thing is you can see what you've got. So if you are collecting... Um, crocheting cottons or recycled ones from op shops and you're looking for somewhere to keep them this is fantastic it's actually a index card holder so when you get onto the officeworks website it's in the section that holds index cards so they would <coughs> flip through them so excuse me <coughs> that's basically um, my hot tip for the day it is fantastic I've got about um, eight of them with just blue or green or whatever and they just sit on a shelf and I can either take them to my sewing room or take them to my lounge room or just dive in grab a few that I like and away I go so if you are wanting a storage solution for crochet cottons that's the best I've found so far Okay, everyone, I'm going to stop the video here. Video uh, number three will appear um, later after I've finished embellishing. It won't be a big, um, long video. It'll just be a catch-up to let you know where I go, unless there's something really interesting that I think of that I want to actually show you the process of. But um, I will leave it at that, and I will see you all soon. Happy stitching, everyone. Bye.